What is STP? It stands for Spanning Tree Protocol. It's a layer two protocol and the entire purpose in life for Spanning Tree Protocol is to create a loop-free topology by blocking redundant links. Why do we need to do that? Well, in a network, we need redundancy. Without redundancy, we find ourselves in a bad place. So to give you an example, let's say we have a couple of switches here. So we got switch one, switch two, switch three. They're all connected to each other back to back in a daisy chain style. And we got host A here connected to switch one and we got a server one connected to switch three. Now, if this guy, let's say Bob, wants to connect to the server, he's going to have to go this direction. Well, what if this link fails? The entire communication fails. What if this link fails? The entire communication fails. That is unacceptable. So what we do is we create redundancy by having a scenario like this where we have redundant links. So if any of these links went down, we still had another path to go from source, from Bob to the server, from source to destination, right? That's the entire idea of having a network. But the issue is that when we do this type of redundancy in a layer two network without running spanning tree protocol, we run into some major issues. And there are three big issues that I would like to bring to your attention. Issue number one, broadcast storm. Issue number two, cam table instability. Issue number three, transmission of multiple frames to the destination. Well, what does that mean? Let me explain on the next slide. In a scenario like this, where we have host A connected to a switch, host B connected to another switch, and these two switches are connected to each other via a single link. That's not a problem. They can talk to each other all day long, even without running spanning tree, not an issue. But the minute we add the second link into the picture here, well, we got ourselves a problem if you're not running STP. What's gonna end up happening is when host A wants to talk to host B, it's going to send an ARP message, address resolution protocol. So remember ARP, we already have a layer three IP address of the device you want to talk to, in this case, host B. But what we do not have is the layer two MAC address. That's the question mark. So what we end up doing is we construct an ARP frame and we send it out. And at layer two of this ARP frame, if you were to like zoom into it, what we'll see is that the destination MAC address field is set to all Fs because host A does not have the entry of MAC address for host B in its ARP table. That's why it sent the ARP message to begin with. When that happens, this switch in the middle, let's say switch one and the top one is switch two, switch one is gonna get it and it doesn't understand layer three at all. So it's only gonna look at source and destination MAC address. When it looks at the source MAC, it goes ahead and puts the MAC address of A in its, in its CAM table or MAC address table. However, when it looks at the destination field, it realizes that it does not have that in its CAM table or MAC address table. So it sends out a broadcast. So this is the port that it initially received the request on. It's not gonna send the broadcast out here. However, it will flood this frame out all the connected ports. So switch two is gonna get that frame twice over each link and host B is gonna get that frame. Now when host B gets that frame, it's gonna respond back with its MAC address because when it looks at the layer three destination IP field, that IP address will match its own IP. So it responds back to host A with its MAC address. When it does, switch two learns that MAC address 
and puts it in its cam table or content addressable memory table. We have redundant links. So the frame is being sent out both links in all directions. When switch two gets that frame that was initially sent by switch one, it's gonna send it back out to switch one again. It creates this, it, this kind of broadcast storm where the frame keeps looping around the network over and over and over again. And unfortunately at layer two, we do not have what's called a TTL value or time to live value, which we do at layer three, but at layer two, we do not have TTL at layer two. So what that means is the frame can literally loop around forever and ever and ever bringing the network to its knees unless you turn off the switches or you break one of the links or you do something manually to stop that from happening. So that's the first problem we get. The second problem we have to deal with is the cam table instability. So let me explain. Let's say if this is port one and this is port two. When switch one sends that frame out to switch two with the source MAC address of host A, not only switch one is gonna learn it, but switch two will also learn it because of the fact that that source MAC address is in that layer two header field. So it's gonna grab it and insert it into the cam table. That's what switches do, they learn MAC addresses. Let's say if that frame arrived maybe a few milliseconds before arriving over port two, switch two is gonna have confusion in its MAC table. It's gonna say, well, I've got MAC address A available over port one. But when the same frame arrives a few milliseconds later, it's gonna get confused and go, no, 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 it's not over port one. It's actually on port two is where MAC address of A lives. And when it does that, it's going to keep switching back and forth as it continues to get frames. And this causes MAC instability because you're gonna keep switching back and forth between port one and port two. And finally, because we have these redundant ports and multiple frames, the host may end up getting multiple copies of the same frame and it would cause issues. The application that host B is running might actually crash because it may not know how to handle duplicate frames. So these are the three big issues that occur in a network when there's no spanning tree running. Now let's jump into STP fundamentals. As I mentioned, it's a link layer protocol. It's a layer two protocol designed to ensure loop-free topology. It's defined in IEEE standard 802.1D. So it's an open standard. It's not proprietary to Cisco, which is good. Switches use special frames called BPDUs or probes to exchange information about bridge IDs and route path costs. And we'll talk about those details momentarily. You'll be an expert in, in a few minutes. But before we get there, what are BPDUs? They are bridge protocol data units. BPDUs are essentially spanning tree advertisements. BPDUs are sent out all active ports on a switch every two seconds by default. However, on the non-root bridge, BPDU hello messages are sent based on the timer configured on the root switch. So let's say if on the root switch, you change the timer to a non-default value, the non-root bridges will adhere to that non-default value. And remember, the main function of STP is to do what? To discover loops in the network and find the most efficient way back to the root and block the redundant links. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.